second part of today, uh, as usual, uh, tough and uh, very dense. <laughs> so the idea for today is to uh, work on, uh, on the programming side and understand a bit about how to interface devices which are not like uh, the one we, we saw in the last uh, in the last lessons. But now we are starting to address the idea of uh, interfacing more than one device, possibly uh, involving more than one technology. So the idea is to understand what we need to take care of and what are the, the, the issues and, uh, and the problems we need to account when we need to coordinate and control different devices altogether as they are as they were a, a complex system and uh, how can we do that uh, in a uniform way and just to avoid struggling on uh, on the single specific uh, technology issues and uh, languages and so on so that's the general idea just to have the the usual fun uh, in the end what we will end up with is uh, something which is able to control a lamp again but in this case, the lamp is using a completely different technology. This is a Z-Wave, which is a wireless technology, okay? And this controller here is an Inocean controller, so another wireless technology. This in particular has a, has a, a very interesting feature. It has not batteries inside. It harvests energy from the force you put in, the, in pressing the button. So the force I put uh, while pressing the button gets converted into electricity and then used for sending the radio messages. And the final script we developed today is to enable control from this device, which is a, you know, the innocent technology, uh, to control with this and the other, uh, which uses that way. So we need to translate protocols and to do that in a, the most effective way possibly, okay? So what if I press here and I got the lamp on and off? This has no batteries, okay. So that, that's the, the, the final goal. It, it seems quite easy and, and quite stupid, okay. We, we can light lamps without anything of this. But uh, that's the, the main idea is to understand what are the, the principle li underlying this interoperation between these two different technologies, okay. Not, not uh, the, the final goal of lighting up a lamp, which is, of course, trivial. Okay, so. Um, Go to the slide. So these are the goals for today, and the time is really strain, uh, strict, so I will go faster. Probably I will not develop anything from scratch here, just show, show you the solution that you have on GitHub. I'm sorry for that, but otherwise we don't have enough time to, to do all the things. Um, so first goal. Given an, uh, an APS specification like the one uh, of the EU, you remember that uh, the last time we used the UAPI without any explanation. I just said, okay, the way for sending a command is this, trust me. Okay, now let's try to have a look at the documentation and uh, understand a bit what the documentation explains and how can we understand from the documentation what are the commands and what are the, the formats we need to use. And uh, the case we study about this uh, API specification is the case of the dog gateway, which is a software gateway that enables basically to control different devices with different technologies as if, as if they were just belonging to one technology, very abstract. I'm going to explain what that means. Um, so the second goal in order, but not the second in, uh, in importance, is to understand what device interoperation means. So what are the, the, the problems that you are going to face in uh, almost all your projects? You have different devices that need to work together. And how can you tackle them? And uh, what, can, what can you expect uh, about uh, issues arising and, uh, and, and difficulties? And on, from the development point of view, the idea is to first develop a Python script that given the API specification uh, uses the APIs for turning on all the lamps connected to the gateway. In our case, we have just one lamp, but this should work for any lamp of any technology, okay? So a little bit different from the other uh, time in which we only had the U lamps. Um, and the second 
step of development is this one. So develop a Python script that listens on a technology and controls another technology, okay? So, um, I think this is the longest slide-based lesson we had together. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we aim to do in general in an ambient intelligence system is something like that. So we want to either achieve some particular function which we call intelligent function or we want to achieve some something about containment, security, coordination of devices, and so on and so on. This is the general goal. You want to detect, for example, uh, the, the, um, the elements you have in your bag and you want to avoid forgetting them in your room when you are departing one of your projects. This is the goal, the final goal, but how can we reach the, uh, the goal? Um, one of the problems we need to face, there are many others, but one of the problems we need to face, this is for, for example, for the smart building case, but it's, it's valid for all the cases, including the one you take on in your, uh, in your group work, is that we have many, many technologies to do the same thing. So this is, for example, just for doing home automation. You see there, there are 20 different standards at least, plus the general one, plus so on and so on. And this more and small case, but happens also for you. You are using something for getting a position. What? GPS, Bluetooth beacon, what else? And so on and so on. And at some point, we need to address the problem that arises when we have uh, so many different technologies that need to work together. So what if I want to control a lamp? I need to learn a different language for every different technology. Okay. That will mean that for just turning on the lamp, something that we can do since 20 years at least, I say 200 years probably, <laughs> okay? We need to wait for another 200 years to understand all the languages that are there, okay? So that, that's not feasible and that's not really intelligent, probably. So we need to, to find a way to abstract all this stuff and to treat all the technologies as just one. And this, uh, this is mainly the general principle we, we, we call uh, interoperability. So defining a mechanism or a set of mechanisms that enable you to control different technologies with a not so high effort. I'm not saying without effort, you need some effort, but with a reduced effort at least. And the idea behind this uh, reduced effort is to apply what is called the, the information hiding principle. So how can I control all this stuff in a uniform way? That, that's my, my golden goal, you know. Uh, you have many devices also in your project, you want to, you would like to have just one single language to control everything. So don't, you don't have to care about the language, just write Python, for example. And then someone else takes care of uh, speaking the right bits and bytes on the right medium for controlling the device, okay? Um, and to do that, what, what can be applied is this information ID in principle that basically separates what you need from what you uh, are required to do for achieving your goal, okay? So on the lower side, there are all the things that we don't want to have when we start developing applications in this field. So we don't want to care about network issues, protocols, changes in paradigms, I don't want to care if the device is notifying me about some change or if I need to pull the device for getting any change on it. So I don't want to care, for example, if my Bluetooth beacon sends me a signal or if I need to interrogate, to query the beacon to get back some information. Don't care. Changing time, so how frequently can I query a device or not? How frequently the device is sending to me data or not? Don't want to care. Changes in feature, okay, this is a, my beacon version one, this is the other beacon of another brand. They are a little bit different because they need to have some marketing uh, leverage for, for, for getting each own market. So in that case, I don't care because the only feature for me, for example, is the RSSI level and the UID. I don't care about all the rest. In particular, if one beacon is providing temperature and the other is providing, I don't know, step count. Okay, 
They might be useful, but in my specific case, they are not relevant. So I would like to hide a bit this information. And on the other side, what, what we would like to have is to have something which is simple, which is as uniform as possible, and possibly which doesn't change depending on the network, depending on the protocols, and that evolves so slowly. So if I write something today, tomorrow and maybe the next two months will be the same, even if the underlying technology changes. So this is interoperability. What I would achieve if I, if I would be able to, to, to build up a framework for doing that. Of course, this is not currently achieved. There are many solutions. Any of these solutions claim to be interoperable, okay? But uh, the usual panorama is that anyone starts to say, okay, it's crazy to have 200,000 different protocols. Let's just write one that uh, bridges all the other protocols. And in the end, what we, had, what we have is 200,001 different protocol, okay? So, what can we do in our, uh, in our course, in our uh, small classes? Actually, we don't aim to, to, to solve this big problem because nobody still has solved the, the problem. We just have, want to find a solution for us to, on one side, understand what the operation is, and, uh, and on the other side, to bridge different devices and see that, they, that it, it can be done, at least. So the idea is to get some useful information, some uh, useful, useful mindset and approach rather than a solution that works, okay? So what, what I'm presenting here is the software, which is running here, whose main goal basically is to, to hide the information, the underlying information of the networks. So applying a bit to the, the principle we had before. But this is not the golden standard, absolutely. There are many other solutions that try to do the same. The idea is that this should be the mindset in which you start. So don't try to avoid struggling on single specific particularities of a network of a technology. Try to, to work as general as possible. So if you need, for example, the position, just need the position, not the position which is given in that particular format from that particular device, and if you change the device, nothing works anymore, okay? So the idea is to separate the things. Of course, you need something to access the network, but you need also something that, that does the real logic that should be independent from the network. Okay, so what we have here is the software. I don't, I don't go in, uh, in uh, the deep particulars uh, of this software, but only the, on the paradigm. So the idea is that you, in the reality, you have many, many different protocols and devices and you need to interface them. It depends on the scenario. In the smart building, there are some kind of devices. In the smart cities, there are other devices. In your smart bag, there are other devices. In the smart garden also, and so on. But in general, what you have is a multitude of devices and networks and protocols that need to be somewhat bridged. And what does this software that we are just trying today is to assume that each technology at least is able to communicate over something which is similar to an Ethernet connection, which might be Wi-Fi or cabled connection or something similar, a USB pen, for example, okay? Um, then what the software must do is to take all this information, translate, so speak every language, and translate all the languages to just one common language. That's the general idea. And this common language is based on REST. So that if we are able to handle REST calls, we can handle all the devices on all the networks, at least in principle. Okay, so you see I don't go inside the, 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 the solutions we, we decided to adopt for that software, because I don't want to, to focus on the software, I want to focus just on the, on the kind of features uh, we, we could expect and Subsequently, how can we use them from Python? Um, API, REST. So we are expecting nothing new. We are treating resources, and we expect devices to be represented as resources. In this case, in particular, we have three main APIs. One about devices, one about the environment, 
So where the device is, basically. And one about the rules which uh, we don't care about. Let's just concentrate on the devices which are the object on our, of our course, basically. And which are the, the one who uh, better map on, on the problems you might encounter with, uh, with your projects. So what, what the software does and what, in principle, also your solution might, might do is to provide common services for all the devices. In this case, these common services are the ability to query the gateway software to know which devices are there and what they can do. To require that software to execute commands expressed in the high level language, then the software translates them. To monitor the current status of the devices. Okay, so the lamp is on or off. How can I control that? And of course, as any REST application to do the classical create, update, and delete operations. I want to add a new device, remove, and so Okay, so in principle, what I want to have, and don't be scared by the format because actually it is not this one. <laughs> okay, but what I want to do in principle is to just send a get on a URI and get back a payload. And if this payload is independent from the network, it's really nice because uh, the application, our Python script, for example, using this API is able to handle different devices without caring about the technology. So that, that's the principle I want to, to share with you, not, not the technology underlying. Okay, so uh, let's try to have a look at the real API documentation, if I could get it, so that we can start with our first goal of reading and understanding the documentation of the an API, and this should be just one second. Development. Okay. APIs. This is, an, this is an example of API documentation. It's quite similar to the Twitter APIs, for example. There are many styles. What we need to do is to be able to face different styles to get the information we need. So, uh, what do we get from this initial page? There are different APIs. You see here, there's a REST API, a WebSocket API, and history API. Okay, so probably I will need the REST API now. What, what the API enables us to do is described there. So when I start with an API, try, first step, try to understand what the API provides, because maybe it's not the right one. Then, um, for example, let's look at this device documentation. You see here, this is a quite typical way of describing uh, a REST API, where you describe basically, um, let me go back here. The, the resource you are publishing, in this case devices, okay? The kind of authentication and communication you need to have to use for getting this information. So for example, there you see no authentication. So I don't have to care about username and passwords. Which is the response format, JSON or XML? So probably I need to specify which is the content type I'm expecting. As you have seen in the previous hour and a half, you can specify content type JSON, for example. Also like the, uh, what we did in the last lesson. Then, Allowed methods, 
what methods can I invoke on this resource? Just get. So this is a collection probably, okay? And in fact, the object is an array of devices. So it's a collection, a real collection. And what it represents is described here and is the set of devices handled by the gateway. Let's have a look at the response. Okay. So usually it works like that. You have the API, you have the description of, your, of the resource, description of the operation you can perform the resource and some sample format so that you can understand what you are required to send and what you are expecting to receive back. So in this case, we send just a get, get API URL slash devices and we want back, or we get back this response, which is say, okay, there are many devices, it's an array, and for example, the first device is this one, the Z-Wave gateway, that one, which is this, this board on the, on the Raspberry Pi, which is located in the demo room, in, in our case in the classroom. The technology is Z-Wave, the kind of device is a gateway, something that permits to control other devices. And what can we do with the, with the gateway? We have one common name associate that permits us to join different devices to the gateway. And another common name, this associate. So remove devices from the set of the one of the devices controlled by the gateway. And then, for example, here there is another device which is a power outlet, a plug, okay? Which is in the same room, but now it has the command off. You see here, nothing about the technology. What I need to send to the device for controlling the device, so let's look at the commands. I just need to put here. Devices device ID, commands, command name. Something like put devices slash lamp one slash commands slash on. Without caring about the technology, okay? This is quite centered on the, let's say, building scenario. But the idea is that when we, sh we need to face and to take uh, different technologies and to make them work together, we need to come up with something like this, with something that uh, somewhat hide the complexities behind it that are there and that depend on the different technologies and enable us to develop the logic very easily. Or just by, let, let's not say easily, but by concentrating on the logic only, okay? So that, that's the main principle. Okay, so um, very long discussion. Let, let's have a, a bit of Python programming. If you want, if you have questions, just tell me, or uh, if you already have questions, tell me. Um, okay, let me try to switch to the Python code. If I could get the development environment here and enlarge the font. Otherwise, you cannot see. Okay, first, you already have the code on, on GitHub, so if you want to download it or you, if you want to follow, just read there. You can experiment with the code, but of course, you. You can interact with the gateway because you don't have it at home, but you have it in the lab. So if you want to try the, the example, you can do it in the lab. Um, there is also one public instance which is reachable inside the Politecnico, and the address is dog.polito.it and uh, colon 8080 because it's listening on the port 8080. So uh, I type here the, the address. Okay, it's this one basically without where here is dog dot polito dot it. Okay? 
So you can also try to, to play with that. First exercise, let's list all the devices we can control. How can we do that? We need to send a REST request. How can we send a REST request in Python? We do have a module. We developed the module last week, you remember. Our mythical REST module, which is working for everything, okay? So, let's import it here. Import REST is the one we developed last week. We need the URL of the service. We said that the URL is this one. So, the address of the gateway plus API plus version. Quite, quite similar, for example, to the REST uh, music server, which was music API version one. Okay, so just the URL. Then, from the documentation, we learned that for getting all the devices, we need to refer to the resource named devices. So our final URL will be this base URL plus devices, okay? And now, to get all devices managed by the gateway, we just perform a REST call. So REST.send all devices URL, and as I say there, we provide an information that we only accept JSON. In this case, since from the API documentation, we know that the server, the gateway, can provide both JSON and XML, this is a way for telling to the server, okay, just give me the JSON format, because I don't understand the other, okay? So if the server is developed in the right way, it will provide back only the JSON content. Okay. Then, let's try to get this and to send our get request with the browser just to see what happens. And you will see that it's a little bit different. Okay, slash devices. XML, why? Because with my browser, I haven't specified the content type I like. So XML is one of the default formats for the browser. The browser will ask for HTML first, secondly for XML. So that's why I got X. But still, I can have a look at what devices are managed now by the, that particular server, which is, again, the technology gateway and one lamp holder, which is this particular element. Okay, um, maybe I can just move it. Is it? Okay, which is this one. Okay, perfect. So in between the actual fixed lamp holder and the lamp, there is this device which is controlled by Z-Wave. Okay? And this is the lamp holder. And it has one on common, one off common. Okay. So. We get all the devices. What do we want to do? Just light up all the, all the lamp holders. Keep it, them on for 10 seconds and just un, turn them off. Like, like what we did for the U lamp in the last lesson. We said that the response is a collection of devices. So given the response, which is these all devices, what we need to do is to iterate over the collection, okay? So for device in all devices, okay? And you see here, this is strange for, I was looking at it, why? There's another four, for i in a range from zero to length of all devices of device. Let's have a look at the response. Um, sorry, this sample response, so that we may understand better. Oh, 
Okay. You see here, this is the main response body, which has a key named devices inside, which in turn is uh, an array. So what I'm doing there, which is actually too much, I'm saying for all the entries in the response, which is actually just one, because it's the root one, I iterate over the element of the, over each single element, which is my device object. Okay, so that it's a little bit complicated, but what we are doing is just to enter inside each device with these two cycles. Um, then I get the device class. So why I'm getting the device class? Because I just want to turn on the lamp holders. So I need to understand what kind of device I'm getting back. So I get the class which is inside all the devices, position device, I class, okay? So I'm going down back here, this element, okay? The way gateway is not the one I want. The one I want is lamp holder, which is not, oh, it's here. So I want the one, for example, um, class. See? Select. Okay. Okay. So, okay, this is wrong, but for example, here, this is the description of another device, which is a power outlet, so probably somewhat in between the description, there will be this class, okay, which actually is not equal, lamp holder, and for us, it will be okay. We want devices named, with the, with the class named lamp holder. Okay, so anyway, get the device class, print it, Finally, what we need to control the device, if we remember the REST API was devices slash device ID slash commands slash name of the command. So we need to get also the device ID. And this is the piece of code that does the same. Uh, that does uh, the, the operation we need to get the device ID. So basically it takes the current instance of device and looks at the ID property. Finally, this is the logic, the real logic. The other was just iteration of the data structure. The real logic is, if the device class equal to lamp holder, again, which technology doesn't matter, let's build a URL to call, which is the base URL plus devices, plus device ID, plus commands, plus on, because we want to turn on the lamp. And let's send the request to the gateway using put as a verb. That means update the status of the resource. Change the status of the lamp from off to on. Content type application JSON, and that's it. This is done for all the devices having the class lamp holder independently from the network. In our case, we have only one, which is on Zidway, okay. If we had another on the U, it would be the same. Okay, then wait for 10 seconds. Time does sleep like the other time. We did it together, and finally the same cycle where we just all the lamp holders, okay? So it's exactly the same, okay. is defined by the API. That, that was, a, so the question was the, where the class lamp holder was defined, and that's a really good question because without the API documentation, you cannot know that that class exists. But if you go, let me zoom a little bit out, just to get, okay, you got this device reference here, and let me just search it for it. Um, lamp holder, you see here, 
that there is a device named lamp holder whose commands are on with no parameters and off with no parameters plus some other, okay? So if I'm, I'm an external application developer, like I was, the role I was playing now, I just need the API specification to know not only the endpoints and the formats of the data, but also, in this case, the commands, what I need to send and what I'm allowed to send. Okay. The same happens, for example, for the UAPI, where we know that the brightness level is named bri, and the value is between 2,050 and something and 65,535, okay? It's the same. And in all the cases, for example, also in your group application, when you need to use external APIs, you need to find this kind of documentation. Okay, so, um, let me go back. Um, Okay, let's try to start up, oh, sorry. Our basic example, okay. The lamp now is turned on and then it stand, stays there for 10 seconds. And in the meanwhile, maybe I'm able to enlarge a bit this. And you see here, this is a dump of the devices we found. We found a Z-Wave gateway and a lamp holder with the ID Z-Wave dash gateway Z-Wave uh, underscore three, uh, lamp holder underscore three. And the only one we control is the lamp holder one. So the one who had lamp holder as a plus. Is it clear? So here, okay, here we learn two things. First, how to use uh, dog gateway, but I'm not expecting you, you to use the gateway in your projects. It wasn't clear at the beginning of the course, so we, we decided to have the lesson uh, for explaining how to use it, but it seems to me that no project need it, probably. But more importantly, we learned how to think about interoperability. So what we should have when we need to handle different technologies. Something like this, something that with three lines of code enable us to turn on all the devices that we have independently from the technology, okay? So this is more about the methodology, not about the, the real content of the code. And we also have some recall of how to use a REST module, okay? That, that will be probably one of the building blocks you will have at your disposal. Okay, so apart this long uh, talk, what can we do now? First, you remember last time we had the U, we, we developed our simple script and then we decided to have something a little bit more articulated. The same, we can control this gateway, but we can also decide to wrap it into a class, for example, to make it easier to use, again. This is not the case, so probably you are not using this class, but the idea is that you have something complex, you test it, you try it, you, you understand how it works, and then you wrap it cleanly, okay? So to wrap it clean, what we can do, for example, is to develop a class named dog gateway, which abstracts and provides the function of the gateway. So, for example, here, we have this class, which is initialized by providing a URL so that we create a new dog gateway URL. It builds all the information it needs, like uh, the devices URL, and then provides simple methods. Get all devices. Why every time I need compose the request? I, I may build a class for that. And the same for the command. Send command, command parameters device ID, and so on. Get the status of the device, get the devices of a given type, so give me all the lamp holders or give me all the plugs, okay? I'm not concentrating on the code because you know why, but uh, the idea is that the principle is once we understood how the API works and how our technology works, we, we should wrap it so that you know, we can use it more easily. If you remember, for example, in the lab, you were using a Twitter API module which is exactly this. 
taking the API, which is a pure REST API, and wrapping the API into a class so that it gets more easy to use, for example, in Python for us. Okay, given that we have this wrapping, yeah, I'm really going perhaps a bit too fast. What we can do in principle now is to uh, create code that uses the gateway and connects to this gateway anything. Anything that might be, for example, music. If we have our music server, we, we may imagine to have something that, given the track, lights the lamp. Because we have everything very cleanly wrapped, very easy to use in both cases. So we can detect, for example, which track is playing, and on the basis of the track, decide to turn on all the lamps. And that's really easy in a few lines. Another thing um, that we can do, and this actually what, what I'm showing to you, is to get another device, which by some occasion is not integrated in the, in the gateway, but it's outside. It might be your smartphone, I don't know. In our case, it would be this, this button. And write a simple script that speaks with the device and then controls all the other using the gateway. So write a kind of interoperation script. Okay. How can we do this? Okay, first, let's have a taste of what, how much complicated is handling network protocols so that you understand why I was a little bit pushing on trying to have something more abstract. Let me skip everything and just concentrate. Okay, this is protocol interpretation. I don't require you to either learn or understand, just have a look at the complication, okay? So what I'm doing here is reading byte by byte messages, handling serial communication on the USB port, doing stuff, very fun stuff like checking hexadecimal code, um, or some uh, performing hands, binary hands, shift operations. Okay, you do really want to do this for all the devices you are going to use? That's the question, no, no. Hopefully no, okay? That's why I was insisting on the approach is just isolate. So if you have an API, use it first. If you don't, develop this but just once and make it usable for everything, for everyone else and for every uh, piece of the software. Okay, so that you don't have to face the same problem, the same really difficult problem every time. Okay. So maybe now you understand a little bit better why I was insisting on having something more uh, high level. Okay, given that, we have this module. We don't care about the, how the module works. We assume that we have this API which should be simple. What if we want to interoperate? Okay, what we need to do is to create a gateway instance. We develop the class for that. Create an instance of the other module to get the information and then connect them together. How? By getting a message from one and calling rest endpoints on the other. Which means, okay, I'm skipping a bit, then I'm coming back. Creating the gateway here, dog gateway, and this is the address. HTTP, configuration parameter, which is the actual IP address of the gateway, slash API slash version one. Build the serial port we need, skip uh, everything. Okay, so this is still stuff for handling the network. So if you were required to judge this code, do you think this is clean? Okay, so this is not the end. This is more or less the beginning because it still mixes some protocol interpretation plus some high level information. Okay, 
So this is another way for detecting if you're doing well or not. When you are having those big main methods with many network specific or technology specific code inside, probably you are still too low level, okay? So this is just an indication. But again, um, here you can see the part which uh, actually makes the interoperation. So we have this complicated stuff that needs to be refined. But in the end, the output is, okay, button one, on. That's what we want, okay? And when button one is on, we want to turn on the lamp. And you see here, this is the, the good part. Dot gateway, dot set command, dot device URI, off. And the other is dot device URI on. If also the other part would be like that, we would have a very, very short and very clean script, okay? Okay, so now, let's try to execute it. Okay, now they are connected, and when you press the button, maybe it works, okay. So when I press the button, I got this action equal to one, the gateway is present and sent to the gateway the command on. That's it. And the same if I press off. Okay. Okay, so one thing I want to show you because instead it might be useful for you in your projects. These were more about the, 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 the mindset to use when developing, not, not about the specific technology. This one instead is, might be useful for you. What happens when you are dealing with complex programs and you need to have parameters from the command line? Because you need some configuration, for example, the address of the gateway, or you need to know where your database is, or something like this. What is the port at which your Bluetooth adapter can be reachable? You can use the arguments and parse the arguments normally like uh, Luigi probably showed you in the, one of the first lessons on Python, but that will be really, really annoying. But there is also this module which is named opt or get opt, let me, okay, get opt, which you can use, that it's designed for handling options. And how, how it works, you define the main function, which is the one called when you call the program, you get the args, which are the arguments of the program. And you take them and just pass them rightly inside this get up object, where you pass the arguments, sys.argv, okay? And you pass two strings for specifying the possible arguments. So which of parameters I want to accept? And the syntax is here symbol for the parameter, short representation. Colon means the parameter has a value, okay? And you can also provide the long version, help, port. That means, that means that when you call the program, you call it name of the, of the program minus H, for example, you get the help. So if I go here, type, Get the console, enlarge it a bit. You see now? Okay. I go to the, oh, sorry. And then to the pipe, oh, sorry. Now, if I type just Python, was this? Oh. 
do it. Okay, minus h. You see here, Inosium, pocket sniffer, usage. So exactly the help of the command. Okay, because I declare h. And you see also that I make some mistake. Because I told you, short symbol colon means parameter with the value. And in fact here it is saying option minus h requires an argument, which in this case is clearly wrong because the help doesn't have, require any parameter, okay? But still was just for demonstrating that it works. Um, okay, so. But doing that, you can handle options like any other command line program. And they can be handled in both short and long version. And how can you get the option value? Because that, that's the value about which you are interested. In this way, you got this opt, that stands for options uh, sequence, on which you can iterate. Actually, it's a sequence of tuples of, composed by two elements, so they are couples. O and A, where O is the option and A is the value, okay? So when I iterate, I iterate over options, OPT, sorry, OPT, OPT, <laughs> I got these two values and then I need to check on the whole value to understand which option was selected. So for example, if O is in minus H or minus minus help, so short or long format, then just show the usage and exit. If it's in minus P, minus minus port, store the port value, which is in the A part of the couple, okay? The same for the rate and for the address. In this case, I don't store the address, I just create the gateway directly, okay? And the same for the device. I don't store the device, but I just create, no, in this case, I store the device, which is actually the device URI. What if I got an, uh, an another option? I could handle by saying, okay, if the O parameter doesn't occur in any of the tests, I'm performing, so the last has tell, okay, there's an unhandled option, stop everything. This is, this a search false means, okay, I'm not able to understand this option, stop option handling and just write the error, okay? So if I go back on, oh, let me understand, maybe I close this? Okay. This one, this one, okay. And I call this minus K, option not recognized, okay. It was the last cells. So if you need in your work to address many configuration parameters, you can do with that, for example. Or you can just specify one configuration file with this method and then read the file, for example, using JSON as a format, as you want, okay? This is just an int. Okay, so, I've been quicker than I was planning, actually. So if you have any question, we still have time, otherwise we can conclude now. Any question, any doubt? It was really annoying, probably. <laughs> Okay, okay, so let's conclude the lesson. And if you have questions also about the, the groups and so on, we still have 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>